is it going guys drew peacock here back with another video i feel like some like i don't know i feel like uh the cliche like motorcycle guy with my white boy haircut and uh wearing the motorcycle jacket right now i actually just wrote to my parents wow the lighting is really bright outside i actually just wrote to my parents so i'm gonna take this off in a minute but she's back and uh I'm excited, okay? I uh, got some news, okay? You, you, I think you guys will be happy. I'm happy. I think you guys will be happy. One second. Really quick though, guys, I do want to thank today's video sponsor. It's actually the Octane app. I have promoted them before on my Instagram, and that's just because they are a really cool app for the car scene. You can find all different types of events all over the country, and it's as simple as just looking in your region and finding what you want to go to. You can tap on event and see all of the different cars going, and you can also RSVP so they could see if you're going to. Once you RSVP, they do see what car you're going to bring. So if you want to flex your car on another app, this is the app to do it and then you can pull up and show them in person. They also have this pretty cool feature called Quick Drive, which allows people to see you while they're driving. And you can also link up with friends so that way none of you guys get lost. So guys, if you're trying to get more involved with the car scene, go ahead and download the Octane app. I mean, like I said, it will keep you busy. And if you're just ever bored, go check out some local meets. You might even see me at some, look for my car, see if I RSVP, but go ahead, download it. Link in description down below. Let's get back to the video. There we go, much better. Got the hat on to cover up the Johnny Bravo hair, got the sunglasses to cover up my ugly face. All right, back to the real talk. We got the Mustang back. It's actually it's actually really really good news. So we got the Mustang back if you guys don't know My local shop had been kind of bending me over and kind of shoving it up You know where and making me just pay over and over and over for these retunes that it just seemed like I didn't need um, Over and over they found little problems here and there were like oh you need this you need that some of it was justified and some of the other stuff just Didn't seem like it, it seemed like they were kind of just cutting corners and being lazy on my car and well i took it to a new shop i'm not going to mention their name because they didn't want me to say or to disclose some stuff so i'm not going to mention their name um but really great shop it was a little bit of a drive for me but really great shop they took care of the car they did everything i wanted them to do and it runs beautiful now and i mean beautiful and so the other shop had it dynoed at 489 horsepower and that sounded like bullshit to me. It's like, okay, wait, I have an F1A Pro Charger, a smaller pulley doing about 14 pounds of boost, E85, and I'm doing not even 500 wheel on that? My saline blower was doing 500 wheel, and I was on 91 octane. What the hell are you talking about? So I left them, left them completely. The car was running like ass when I took it from them. I was like, you know what? No, no, I'm not, I'm not coming back here. So I took it to the new shop, they got it running right, they found some little issues here and there, fixed them up, little things, nothing crazy. Um, and they got two more pounds of boost out of it by fixing those little things. They installed some new fuel rails that came with the kit that I purchased when I took it to the other shop to have them install it. They didn't install them. They just were like, no, nah, we've already put too much time into the car. We're not gonna put any more time into it. Um, next time, next time. What, what kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> like, I, I paid for the parts that you told me to buy and you're not even gonna install them? So they installed them. I'll show you guys all that when I get it backed out of here. Uh, we'll get a little cold start and everything. It doesn't sound crazy like good on cold start because it's E85 and it's, it, you'll see. You'll see what, I, what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, this new shop got it and, the, and it's been on a dyno since and it's been, it's, it's good. It's right now right at under 600 wheel. Went from 489 to almost 600 wheel with you know just them fixing it up just them tuning it and it like come on like <laughs> so you mean to tell me that the other shop said oh no that's all i can do and then you guys got it there almost 600 wheel you guys gained about 100 horsepower with me not installing anything big you guys just took care of it like damn like that's what you call a good shop right there so like i said they asked me not to disclose you know their name and stuff like that because I don't know why, but I'm not going to. So, but they're they're really good. If you ask me in person and you need a place to go to, I'll send you there. But yeah. Anyway, let me get my camera on a tripod and we'll, we'll get a nice little cold start right here. We'll see how it sounds. I haven't really gotten authentic cold start yet it's on, on the new tune and everything like that. So we'll get an authentic cold start and we'll uh, we'll go from there. So while my car is warming up, I actually moved to the backyard really quick. Uh, the car is still loud, obviously. Um, but yeah, when you first cold start it, it's got like a, 
it starts quiet and then it gets loud uh, it's, it's a little different from how it used to be on 91 octane it's just a tune but um the car sounds great though i mean overall the car sounds great it feels great there's no more joltiness or stuttering or any of that stuff before before with the shitty tune at the old shop you would step on it a little bit and then you'd let off and you'd feel the car just like rock back and forth really quick and it felt like shit now it's nice and smooth i mean it feels like how it did when i first bought the car with the saline blower on it and i mean i'm just super excited to drive it again um, once it warms up i'll back it out and i'll show you guys kind of what they did oh but you gotta love the smell of e85 it is beautiful i mean i oh my god i wish my fart smelled like this all right, so I let it get warmed up almost all the way and then I backed it out. And uh, let me just show you guys what they installed really quick. So they went ahead and finished technically the fuel system install by installing the fuel rails that actually came with my fuel system. Again, I don't know why the other shop didn't install them. Like it's not rocket science. It's not like you're at the last piece of the puzzle, just install them. And they went ahead and did it and their work looks really nice. They cleaned it up really good. Where the other job, if you guys don't remember, I'll throw in a picture right here. I already cleaned it up since then, but they had, there were just power cables, just, you know, unloomed, just flopping around. They weren't secure. I went ahead and did what I could to clean it up. I mean, I'm sure they could have routed it a bit better. They could have gone probably through the fender if they really wanted to, but they didn't. Um, so I did what I could and I cleaned it up and that way, nothing should be rubbing i went and checked and they didn't even put a damn grommet next to the firewall where the cables are passing through like do you know how much of a hazard that is like come on man that old shop was just trying to kill me it seems like i mean after a time the firewall could have easily just chewed through the the little rubber you know protector shit on the wires and then boom we got a fire and then my car is done come on man like it's just the simplest stuff and they forgot about it the new shop just completely took care of me and did what i what, what the car needed uh, if you guys don't remember a long time ago i installed the catch can right here they went ahead and said hey man the catch can might be stealing some boost from you so they went and made this little contraption right here to make sure that the air can still flow out when there's no boost but the boost can't flow in there is a uh I forgot what kind of valve it's called but there's a valve right there to pretty much make sure it only goes one way that way the boost can't go and pressurize my crankcase which again just the knowledge of knowing that the other shop didn't say shit about it they were just like <laughs> whatever so we went from having 14 pounds of boost on this pulley to 16 pounds of boost which again i mean two pounds of boost on e85 it's a lot it adds up so we went from again 489 wheel to just about 600 wheel with pretty much the same setup it's just there were little things here and there like they did the fuel rails i doubt i gained any horsepower from fuel rails honestly because the fuel pressure was fine um we gained some boost obviously from that so that did a little bit but it's like okay I, <laughs> if the other shop knew what they were doing that should have still been around like 550 wheel or something like that if the other shop was doing what they were supposed to be doing and it wouldn't have felt like shit. but now new shop took care of me and uh yeah they didn't bend me over and screw me over so in a bit we will go cruising and i will do a couple pulls probably but my tires are on their last thread pretty much uh, we're going to be getting some new rear tires soon i mean they're they're right about there they don't got much life left so yeah they're on their they're on their last couple weeks probably maybe we'll send them out with a really nice burnout once we get everything taken care of but yeah i mean it's, it's honestly it feels like a whole different car now but yeah guys this kind of just confirms my theory where if something doesn't sound quite right if the shop is telling you something get a second opinion some of these shops they don't have your best interest in mind you can tell when they do because they're going to be straight up with you some of these shops they're in it for the money and you can tell when stuff isn't going the way it's supposed to be going i mean my car was damn near in the shop for about a month and we gained what 15 horsepower with full e85 you're going to tell me that 15 horsepower is what we gained an na build on e85 gains about 30 wheel horsepower so how am i gaining less than an na build with fully 85 it just didn't make sense so again i got a second opinion obviously took my car in they did what they were supposed to do and they helped me out a lot and again i i would recommend the shit out of them but again they don't want me to say their name and i understand that so for now since we're actually starting to see some good power numbers again you know when i first bought the car it had about 500 wheel horsepower we went ahead and swapped out the saline blower we put on the pro charger blower and now we're about at almost 600 wheel which again i can't complain about full e85 600 horsepower i can't really complain about i'm happy with that for now so what we're going to do for now is just focus on cooling weight reduction and just stuff like that i want to make sure that the car can can you know keep up i want to make sure that it can keep up with the 600 horsepower 
If it can't, then we're gonna start breaking stuff. And that's what I don't wanna do. I don't wanna break axles. I don't wanna break engine components because of heat. Heat is the number one worst thing on a car. And so I think it's gonna be smart instead of just adding more boost, more boost, more boost, more boost. Instead of doing that, I think it would be very smart to just go ahead and just take care of the car as is for now. We'll do some cooling stuff, cooling mods. Maybe we'll wrap the exhaust headers. I don't know, I've been looking at it for a while, but I'll show you guys what I have to do if I do do that. But for now, I, I, I looked up a few things on, on some little easy things that you can do to just modify your car's cooling system. It's pretty simple and they all work. So again, instead of tossing this tiny pulley on there and going and overheating and blowing a whole lot of stuff up, what I wanna make sure is that the engine can you know keep up, it can take it. So what we're gonna do is I actually ordered a piece today, so it'll be here in maybe a week or two, but we're gonna get a racing thermostat um, I, would, I don't know why they call them racing thermostats, but pretty much what it'll do is it's a thermostat that will open at a lower temperature. So the way your thermostat works is pretty much coolant is going into the engine. Once the thermostat has reached a certain uh, temperature, then it opens, allowing the coolant to go around your system and go back. The stock one on a Ford Mustang GT of this generation is about 180 degrees. So your coolant has to reach 180 degrees before it can circulate. What I'm going to do is install one that is 160 degrees. Now, 20 degrees does not sound like a lot but when cooling and temperatures is it is a decent amount again you don't want your car to run too cool that'd be bad <laughs> but uh, 160 degrees will be a nice temperature to have this car and the cooling circulating and making sure that the engine is running slightly colder than it would is it gonna make a huge difference probably not but it's gonna be a nice little touch when accumulated with a bunch of other little cooling things that we can do it might help out a decent amount another thing you can do is add cooling additives like uh, what is it royal purple ice water wetter you can look up and see which one does what but you can do that and that will significantly uh, decrease the, the overall temperature of your coolant while it is running which is another good thing to do but again they all have their ups and downs uh, it seems like purple ice at least from the videos that i've been watching seems to be better than water wetter but i don't know i've heard my buddy say water wetter is better so it all just depends on personal preference again another thing you can do is upgrade your intercooler and stuff like that my intercooler is already souped up maybe what i can do is cut a bigger window for it that will i don't know it'll make more sense but i don't know i mean it is kind of a tiny window but if you do notice the whole intercooler is exposed underneath that bumper. So I don't know, maybe chop this window up a little bit more. Nothing that's gonna be done today, um, but it's something that I can easily do in the future if I take my time and do it. The biggest thing that you can do is probably wrap your exhaust headers, but it is the hardest thing to do because you gotta pretty much take the headers off the car. I've tried it once in the past with the headers on the car, didn't go so well. It was a bitch. It's not really possible, not, not a viable option. It's about 1030 in the morning, so I don't think there's going to be that many cars on the road. I think I can get one or two poles in. Don't expect me to go back and forth 140 mile per hour poles. Don't expect that. I'll do a couple poles. My tires aren't looking too good, so a couple. A couple will do. It'll be fun. You'll hear the car. You'll see the car again. And I mean, I'm excited to drive the car anyway. It's been, it's been a while. afraid to throttle down completely and the only reason why I feel confident doing poles on a small street like this is because everyone is either at work or at school right now and there was like one car on the street but I'm actually afraid to throttle down again and I haven't had that feeling in quite some time um, it, it, it is for sure a different feeling car let me roll up the window so you guys can hear me better but it is for sure a way different feeling car it's not super loud like it was with the 24 PSI pulley, thank God, because uh, that would have sucked balls, because I want to be able to drive my car again, and thank God they got this pulley to get a little bit more boost and a little bit more giddy up out of it. Thank God, I'm so happy about that. But um, yeah, I mean, it just feels like a completely different car. Um, sadly, I didn't get the GoPro app to connect to the GoPro, so I hope the video is okay. I hope it's lined up where I want it to be. Um, this road sucks just in general. You can see that we're just bouncing up and down. There is a school right here. Not gonna do any dumb pulls because I'm not a dick and don't want to kill anyone. I am in a Mustang and those are our crowds. So gotta still be smart. But uh, hopefully the freeway is somewhat empty. Like I said, I'm on E85 now. I get 10 MPG. I don't want to be out here doing pulls left and right. And uh, I'm not gonna be doing them back to back either because then I'm just asking for trouble and I'm asking to break something. And, I'm not all about, uh, I'm, not, I'm not about either of those. So we're 
we're gonna go ahead and uh, cruise over to the, the interstate, go to Mexico really quick, and uh, be safe. Keyword safe. The only thing is, is that I have to remember to shift by like 5,000 because since my thing is reading a thousand low, my normal red line is 6,000. You subtract the thousand, then you're at 5,000. It's simple math. I passed third grade. And it's easy enough to do. So hopefully, damn, there's a lot of dead animals on the road, but hopefully uh, I can remember to shift and then uh, we won't have any uh, issues because so far, every time I've done a poll, I forgot to shift early. And uh, yeah, then I start hearing, wah, bah, 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 and it just, yeah. No, no fun doesn't sound nice i mean it's cool but doesn't sound healthy so we'll go ahead and uh try to remember to shift at five thousand big old five buck route we'll be like it'll be like a dora explorer episode guys when do i shift what's that when do i shift five thousand it'll be like that see i mean you guys could do it comment down below when to shift when, when you hear when you see my rpms reaching a four and a half comment five thousand really quick and i'll remember to shift subconscious like you know co confessions where he was kind of saying don't trust us too much because he said don't let it get under a quarter because he doesn't know what's actually reading so I don't know I think it's accurate because when I put in uh, when, I, when I get to a quarter tank and I put in whatever is like remaining it seems to put in like 10 or 12 gallons which seems like that's correct for my car but uh, yeah I, I just I don't want to risk it but Jesus Christ yeah this car just feels way more peppy I mean obviously I mean you gain a hundred horsepower you're gonna notice it so but it's noticeable we just have to I'm telling you man it is noticeable Jesus Christ it just feels like a whole new animal one comment that I know I'm gonna get asked a lot is change your mpg lol bruh uh well it actually didn't change it as much as i thought it was gonna do so people you know say anywhere between like a third to 50 percent of your of your fuel consumption and it's actually not that bad now i don't drive like an ass hat everywhere okay i'm not driving around flooring it doing all that dumb shit because that, that's just not me um there's a time and a place like i always say in my videos so i'm not one to you know go in and floor it everywhere but uh no i went from getting maybe 12 13 maybe 14 mpg on a good day uh to combined about 10 mpg and again i don't drive like an ass everywhere so if you drive normal you know you're gonna lose maybe three four mpg if that maybe less depending on your car but uh yeah it's actually not that bad now i'm sure it increases more uh the more you drive i, mean, I think my gauge is just fucked but more than likely for different applications it's going to be different but for me it's actually not that bad so um i don't really mind it i thought it was going to be a big ass i thought it was going to be a big pain in the ass to find stations and everything but now they got you hooked up they got apps for that it's, it's really not that bad overall all right guys so i stopped by my buddy's place to let him test drive it really quick because he test drove it when the old shop had uh tuned it and uh, yeah, he says it's like a completely different car. Um, I wanted to record during it, but I forgot because I was just focusing on, you know, 
talking to him and stuff like that but yeah it feels like a completely different car and it's just insane although now the tachometer has completely died um luckily i believe i know what it is it sounds like the motors for these on these ford cars suck balls so i just have to buy a motor that doesn't suck balls and replace it it sounds easier than it actually is but i would have to take out the gauge cluster and go and desolder it and it, you know it's it's a, it's a little mission but it'll fix my problem because it's uh barely moving now so yeah anyway um, i'm gonna head back right now if i find where i can do a pull i'll do a pull but without a tachometer i don't really want to rev it out too much just because that sounds like a dumb idea to me so don't expect a pull in fact you know what just to play it safe i'm gonna go ahead and say no more polls sadly um but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please leave a thumbs up comment down below what you think about the car i'm really pleased with the car personally so i hope you guys are too i mean it, it's cool to see a build come together and yes a build has ups and downs everyone knows that and uh well it's cool to finally get an up we haven't gotten up with this car in a while but with every up there is a down and right now that tachometer is hella down so uh anyway until next video peace